to Pastors United, where a group of pastors, we come together and we discuss the Word of God and try to see how it is that we might make a difference in our churches as well as in our communities at large. We thank you for tuning in. Our host of this is Pastor Richard Walker, and we thank him for his, his blessed uh, vision to have this. We, at this time, we'll have Pastor Jones with our scripture, and we'll ask Pastor Kathy to lead us in prayer. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. You have received me in my distress. You have heard me, and you hear my prayer. How long, O you sons of men, will you turn my glory to shame? How long will you love the worthlessness and seek falsehood? But know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. I read from Psalms 4, verses 1 through 3. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for the education and the uplifting of our soul. Let us pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, God, for this day that you have prepared for us. We ask right now for your guidance and your blessings on this telecast. We thank you for these pastors. We thank you for the opportunity to have an exchange of ideas so that we can go forth and enlighten your people to your word, to your will, and to your way. In Jesus' name we pray. It is so. Amen. 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 On today we will be dealing with uh, the laity of the church, but specifically we're going to deal with today deacons in the church. Uh, so tune in as we go through this. We're going to deal with deacons. We'll deal with church evangelism and evangelists. We'll deal with the missions and the missionaries of the church. But today we're going to deal with the deacons. And our first question is, what is the definition of a deacon in terms of the church today? And uh, Pastor Jones, uh, we'll at, at let you start us off. Amen. Um, the, the word deacon comes from the word diaconus which means servant. And a deacon is a servant to the church. Yeah. Uh, he is a really, uh, he's like an understudy with the pastor. He is to help carry out the duties and the vision of the, the, the vision that God has given the pastor of that particular church. Um, he's called a uh, servant like a slave running fast through the dust. Uh, when the, the duties of the um, <clears throat> of the deacon is called, he shouldn't be uh, slowful. Amen. He should be in a hurry to do the will mm -hmm. of God because when he is under the authority of the under shepherd of that church, uh, he's really under the authority of God. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Pastor Kathy. Pastor Marshall, I, I understand that a deacon's position in the church should be that of clear clarity uh, in regards uh, to uh, serving the church. First and foremost, the deacon must have the heart of a servant, which is having the heart of God. The Word of God implores us to understand that uh, being a servant is the most important uh, position that one should have uh, in mind and in spirit. A deacon is to serve the church. A deacon's position is also not only to serve the church, but he's serving directly under the pastor. That's right. He aids the pastor uh, in moving the church forward. That's right. The definition of a deacon is a decision maker. He's also a decision maker uh, according to the pastor. Uh, also, a deacon should be one of, of non-ill reproach. There shouldn't be anything said about a deacon negative that would be evidently true. A deacon is one who should walk circumspect according to the word of God. And not only that, but not only towards his family, but to his church family uh, as well. In other words, a deacon 
uh, is blameless uh, in his walk. Pastor, let me ask a question. The, since he's a servant, and he's a servant of the church, does his authority supersede that of the pastors? No. <laughs> uh, no, his authority does not supersede that of, of, of a pastor. Let me just say this too, because first of all, a lot of time uh, <clears throat> deacons, uh, sometimes they are chosen, but they are not uh, I mean, I put, have a position themselves to be deacons. I'm going to put it like that. I'm going to make it nice. Uh, everybody wants to hold certain authority in the church, but they don't want to fall under the authority of the, um, the ordinances of the church. So the deacons have to be, first of all, filled with the Holy Spirit. And when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are committed let me say that again, committed. Uh, when you are committed, that means that you are going to follow the ordinances of that particular church and the establishment and the shepherd of that church. Yes, you yes. will fall under that and you must follow those instructions. Um, and when the scripture here was talking about, now, can you supersede him? No. How can you supersede one that God has put you there? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, this might not be too good of an illustration, but the deacon is almost like a help me to the pastor. Amen. Uh, in other words, he ought to be able to, if, if the pastor don't, let's say the pastor, something happened, he can't make it. The deacon ought to be able, I didn't say to get up to preach, but he ought to be able to get up to give a word of encouragement uh, to the congregation. And that word of encouragement has to be from the word of God. And uh, my pastor told me a long time ago, said, if you don't have it in you, you don't have to worry. Uh, nothing from nothing leaves nothing. And you only can give what's in you. And that would be absolutely nothing. <laughs> pastor Marshall, I believe it's important that a deacon understands his position. And a lot of times when... Uh, men or women are put in a position they fail to realize the responsibilities of their position. The position of a deacon is never to, sus to overshadow the position of the pastor. Um, a deacon as, as I, and I'll reiterate without uh, sounding redundant uh, a deacon uh, uh, is a servant to the pastor and it's the wishes and the will of the pastor in which the deacon must follow, but yet the deacon is filled with the Holy Spirit, should be, as he's filled with the Holy Spirit, he will not have a problem in following uh, the uh, rules or following the regulations that's given, handed down by the pastor. Make no mistake about this. Uh, a deacon's job is to serve, even though he is in a hierarchy in leadership of the church, his mindset, his mindset, I'm sorry, should be that of a servant at all times. And he should be adhered to the pastor and then the church as well. Okay. Okay. Well, 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 preacher, since I'm, I'm not one who believes in uh, just putting it in one spot just on the deacons in their servitude alone. But in their servitude, and we said that they should answer to the pastor, shouldn't the pastor live according to the word so that they may be more willing to answer to the pastor? <laughs> well, I think the mindset of a pastor should always be that of, you follow me as I follow Christ. The pastor must, well, first of all, the pastor got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hello. <laughs> okay. That's what I okay. Yeah. The pastor must be filled with the Holy Ghost. The pastor must hear from God regularly. Amen. And the pastor should have uh, so much of the Holy Ghost in him that he could step in and take over any position that has been deemed 
uh, uh, in the church in leadership. As far, what am I saying? A pastor should be able to do it all because he's filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the Holy Ghost gives us the ability, amen, to do or to accomplish that which God has set us out, that God has set uh, forth. Uh, for uh, uh, the pastor or the man of God to do first thing. Then the deacon must have the heart of a pastor, but not get caught up into thinking that he oversees or, or overrides the pastor. I think a lot of times people get their positions mixed up. That's why deacons try to tell the pastor exactly what to do uh, instead of understanding that their position is beneath the pastor. Amen? Amen. And so uh, let that be a lesson that as, as, as deacons, uh, your job is to serve, serve, serve. Jesus said, it made it clear, even I, the Son of Man, have come not to be served, but I came to serve. If a deacon doesn't have the mindset of a servant or servitude, uh, he's not going to be effective in the ministry. It's going to be uh, a trouble. In paradise, amen. Amen. <laughs> um, again, if a deacon, if a, if one is filled with the Holy Spirit, there was a Spirit of God that dwells within every man. We would have us to humble ourselves. Uh, when you are humble, you are committed. When there is a commitment, when you are committed to God, then you are committed to your church. And you are committed to the pastor. Now, one of the problems falls in with deacons and other members of the church is, is that because they don't see what the pastor sees. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you don't see what the pastor sees is because God didn't call you to be all the pastor. Right, all right. <laughs> uh, so we must understand that when you're filled with the Spirit of God, even when we go back into the uh, Old Testament, see, we can go back into the Old Testament and start back with Moses. Uh, when his father-in-law came and told him, you know, you're trying to do too much. Mm -hmm. So he picked out uh, leaders of the tribe and appointed them over uh, uh, certain duties that they could have and the things that they could not make righteous decisions on. Then they would bring them to Moses. And that's what the deacons should be doing. See, but today in our society, it, 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 it's not a shame. It's, it's, I know we always say well, it's a shame to say it, but it's never a shame to tell the truth. Uh, the truth is that a lot of ch church organizations, we have men and women deacons who believe that they run the church. Well, the church is ran by the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's the, that's the captain of the whole ship. Okay, the, uh, the under shepherd, which is the pastor of the church, is a servant of his because he's following the instruction of the Holy Spirit. And he just passed down uh, orders uh, to the deacons of the things that he won't done. But let me say this also with deacons. Deacons ought to have enough foresight, ought to walk so close with God and with the pastor that they ought to see some things that need to be done, that need to be done. Okay, and you really, if, if, if a pastor got a, a good deacon and, and the deacon sees some things that need to be done and they do it, that pastor ain't going to do it but say thank you. Amen. That's all. He's going to say thank you. But when you neglect your duties and trying to say you can hire and fire pastors, let me tell you this. I can go to Israel. I'm still going to be Pastor Jones. The president of the United States can go to another country, his name is going to be what it is. Mm -hmm. He will not be a president over there. He will be him. But you, wherever God sent you, you still are a servant of the Most High God. Amen. 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 God bless you, preacher. According to the book of Acts, how were the deacons, the original deacons, chosen? Pastor Jones. Amen. Well, since I was waiting on Pastor Captain to jump on oh. the mic. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to wake him up over here. Amen. <laughs> yeah, um, from, uh, from my study, uh, the, uh, the 12 was chosen by the, uh, I'm going to put it like this, the, uh, the church of that time because there was some, uh, 
going on where they, they was distributed to the needs of the people. And uh, the people complained to uh, the leadership of that time, the disciples. And as the disciples said that it was not good for them that they should leave the word of God to serve tables. So what they did was they told, they had their congregation say, you look among you and find several, seven men filled with the Holy Ghost that we may appoint. Now let me say that again. The church looked out among them to find several Seven men that was filled with fire and the Holy Ghost, but they weren't appointed by the church. They were appointed by the by the apostles. They're the one who gave them the charge. But uh, I do believe that what they was what the reason why they did it, which was really in wisdom, is that okay, you looked at these men and you have examined these men, so we know that you trust them, Amen. that you trust them. So if, then you bring them back to us. And then we also want to examine them. We, they're not going to go on example, uh, uh, unexamined, but uh, then they appointed them to look over these matters. Amen, Reverend Jones. Um, I also like to point out that uh, they were brought before a council. Uh, the, these men were brought before a council, and it, it, it's ironic. It says uh, in verse, chapter 6, verse 2, it said, Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Verse 3, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of good report, honest report. They were brought before a council but they, the requirements was, first of all, they had to be men of good report. Yes, sir. Right. Good report. And they right. had to have a good reputation. Yes, sir. People right. needed to be able to say when they were brought before the council and chosen, I agree. There's going to be a problem. Let me just say this. I'll get back to that. There's going to be a problem in the church if the pastor says, I appoint this gentleman. I appoint this gentleman as a deacon. I think he's worthy. And a bunch of people in the church uh, uh, disagree because of that deacon not having a good report. Oh, that man, he's not a deacon yet, but uh, he's not having a good report in the church. So they had to have good, honest report. And not only that, they had to be in verse 3, full of the Holy Ghost which uh, the Holy Ghost must be indwelled within them, and then they had to be full of wisdom. They had to be full of wisdom. That's how they were chosen. They weren't just chosen because they were apostles. They were under the uh, 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 under the banner of apostleship. They was chosen. They were chosen as deacons because they were full of the Holy Ghost. They had wisdom. Because, watch this at the end of that verse, whom we may appoint over this business. They were going to be handling the business of the church. If the deacons are going to be handling the, the business of the church, they better be full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Because if you're full of the Holy Ghost, you ain't going to see $10 and say, I'll keep five and give five to the church. Uh, and, and they have to have wisdom. They have to be able to operate in wisdom. For instance, what if the pastor is not there? The deacons need to be full of wisdom to operate the church, even in the absence of the pastor, because they are to be appointed over the business of the church. And verse 4. This was also a requirement to give, our, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So that says to me that they were appointed to, they had to have a, a prayer, continually walking in prayer and to have the ministry of the word. They had to have the word indwelled in them. Amen. Amen. It's not enough to have a deacon to, to give two St. John's and three hallelujahs and think that's enough. The deacon has to be full of the word. So they were pretty adamant. 
the council was pretty adamant about selecting these deacons, and, and this is exactly uh, the requirements as to how they were chosen. Amen. So, Amen. so we see the requirements to how they were chosen, preachers, and so therefore they were called because the apostles were giving themselves to, to the word. Amen. And it was too much for them to be doing given to the word and then be handling the alms and dealing right. with the daily vo uh, 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 vocations of the church. So the deacons were supposed to be a lot of report. They were supposed to be full of the Holy Spirit and they won't be able to handle the business, right? <laughs> so, so in terms of that being said, what did the deacon represent then to the church? I mean, what does they do, do they represent? To, to the church and what does that they represent to 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 the leadership of the church, the apostles. What does that mean? What do they have that they didn't have before? Is what I'm saying. What does the deacon represent to them too as well? Well they they represent they were uh, a representation of Christianity. All that Jesus represented, all that Jesus stood for. And not only that, but they were they were chosen to be the backbone. Of the church. See, this is a very important uh, position in the church. It's, it, and, and you, it's a position that wasn't taken lightly. That's why they, didn't, they had 12 standing there, but they said, we're only going to choose seven. So what happened to the other five? I don't know. But the fact of the matter is, is that they were chosen to be the backbone of the church. If a church without deacons that are not full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom, and being able to do the business of the church, how can they be the backbone of the church? That was, the, that was, that was why they were chosen, to be the backbone of the church. Because remember at this time, Christianity, Christendom, uh, was, was just getting formed. See, and they had to be prepared in all areas. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor, uh, I agree with what uh, Pastor Kathy says. I just want to add to this is that they were chosen because they had shown themselves to be responsible and trustworthy. Uh, a lot of times I do believe that in our churches and sometimes people want positions, but they haven't shown themselves to be trustworthy and responsible. Because when they were responsible, it comes along with an authority. And uh, I'm like this, Lord, help me with this. Uh, I don't, my personal belief, and this is personally, if you don't trust God to, in the past, teaching on tithing, you don't tithe, then how are you going to be responsible for somebody else's tithes? And the offering comes in. Well, I mean, if you're going to be trustworthy, and, and, and then too, he must be in prayer. Okay, they were, that was one of their primaries for the apostles. They, not only was they praying for themselves, but they was praying for the one who God had placed before them. Uh, and, and as you said earlier, follow me as I follow God. Okay. So uh, they showed themselves uh, to be responsible. There is a responsibility that comes along uh, with um, walking in the shoes of a calling a, a deacon. And let me just say this, and, and, and I'm going to pass it back over to Pastor Marshall. A, a lot of our parishioners and people who sit in churches, they're good at memorizing scriptures but they are not good at making applications of scriptures because the word of God has to be applied in our lives. See, I can quote a scripture, but if I don't apply it in my life, all I need is quote it. See, Satan can quote scriptures, but it has to be applied. In other words, when you apply scripture in your life, you make that scripture a part of your life. You live it by what you uh, sing, preach, and teach. But if you're not uh, uh, living it, then you can't really teach it. Yeah. The old, I used to hear old, uh, old people used to say, I, I, I would rather hear or see a good sermon than to hear one. Oh, and I, I went to uh, uh, a class with a Pastor Marshall once, and there was a teacher that said, you can't talk right and walk left. <laughs> you know, so 
it, 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 it just it just it won't work. It just won't. So deacons need to be has to be uh, uh, show a, or that they are worthy of responsibility and authority. And let me say, say this too: people don't come to God and be appointed deacons and then taught how to be deacons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, I just want to ask you that same thing. If you extend the arm of Christ, what is the deacon to you? If, if I'm extended the arm of Christ? If you're the extended arm of Christ, what is the deacon to you? Well, if he's the deacon, then he's my helper. Mm -hmm. I mean, if he's my extended arm, in other words, uh, wherever I need assistance, he should be capable. Mm -hmm. Capable of uh, carrying on the word of God. You know, because see, God has given uh, the pastors a vision. Okay, now, when the pastor has a vision, it, the deacon should come in trying to change the vision. Amen. Uh, <laughs> you know, because that's a vision that God gave him. Amen. Uh, I, I, I'm going to look at uh, uh, Elijah and Elisha, even though both of these men was prophets. But we got to understand that Elisha, prophet Elijah, before Elijah could step into Elijah's shoes. Now, I wouldn't look at him as being a so much of a deacon, but he was a help me to him. That's right. Amen. He was a help me to him. And then, too, you got to wait. And let me say that again. You have to wait on God. And if God is to elevate you into a different position, you allow the Lord to elevate you and not you elevate yourself. Amen. Amen. So whoever lifted themselves according to what I read in the Word shall be abased. Uh, I thank the pastors for that, uh, for that synopsis of, of, of the representation of the deacon, being that uh, he's an honest report, but he's the extended arm mm -hmm. of the pastor. If the pastor's the extended arm of Christ, he's the extended arm of the, of the pastor. Mm -hmm. Where the pastor's reach may not be there, the deacon's supposed to be there to reach further. So we thank God for them for that. Listen, question number four says, is a layman and a deacon similar in the work of the church. Now, I'll, I'll start. A, a layman does not have to be a deacon. Mm -hmm. So are pastors, are they, are they similar in the work of the church? Either one of y'all can take it. Pastor Marshall, they should be in attitude. There you go. Amen, Pastor. Bless they you. should be in their mind, their mindset, their mindset should always be that of a servant. Uh, we keep coming back to this word servant, or servitude. I, I, I think the Lord is bringing us back to this uh, word, this word servant, because a lot of people have a problem with that. A lot of people have a problem with that. And, and I, I believe that because people are elevated in their position, they, they, they somehow feel as if uh, servanthood doesn't apply to them anymore. But in comparison to a layman, the deacon is appointed by the pastor. A layman, not necessary, a layman uh, in, in terms could come and say, well, I, I, uh, um, I volunteer. But it is the deacon's duty once he is, once he, see a volunteer can quit when they get ready. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? This is, this is like a choir member. They volunteer. They get, they tell them to get in the choir and get back out because they volunteer. But once a deacon is appointed, he can't be willy-nilly and come in with the attitude of, oh, I don't want to do this today. Mm -hmm. You know, so in that regard, they're different. But the mindset should always be the same of servitude. Welcome back to Pastors United. We'll start again with uh, our questions to these fine pastors, Pastor Kathy, here to my left, and Pastor Jones. And we're going to start with question number five. As pastors, what do you look for in a deacon? Pastor Marshall, the first thing I look for in a deacon is, does he know Christ? Amen. And if he 
he says he knows Christ, and I believe he knows Christ, then I look for evidence yes. Yes. of his Christian walk. Not only that, uh, I, I look for, uh, can we talk? Oh, yeah. Can we talk? I, I look for a deacon, I look for a man who is blameless in that his name is not all over the church being spoken in a negative light. I, I look for uh, how he carries himself. I look for how he portrays himself, not only to the pastor, but to people. I watch how he interact with people. Uh, uh, what I expect, what do I look for in a deacon? I look for a man who's level-headed. I look for, uh, when I say level-headed, I mean I look for a man who's not easily provoked by people. You know, sometimes people can make you feel you're more than what you really are. Uh, old pastor used to tell me years ago, said, uh, son, always remember you're not as good as people say you are, but you're not as bad as you think you are. <laughs> uh, I, I look for that in a deacon. I, I look for a man who's not emotionally charged. I can't, a man who I can't correct and he gets, off, goes off on a tantrum. Right, right. Or a woman leaves the church. Or wants to all of a sudden stop serving uh, the church and the pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, I look for a man who, who practices what he preaches. If tithes are to be regulated in the church from the deacon board, I look for him to be a giver. Amen. 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 Because there's going to come a day when he's going to have to stand next to the pastor and ask the people to give. That's right. And he needs to be blameless in that area. Mm -hmm. I look forward to that. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Jones because I know he has a lot he looks forward to. But that, those are some of the things I look for. Uh, I look for in selecting uh, a deacon. Amen. Um, but first of all, I look for him to feel the qualifications that God has called, called for in a deacon. Honest report. Uh, can I be fooled? <laughs> yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I look for someone who uh, is an honest report. I look for someone who has dedicated their life to God. Now, I, I have, I've known people who are dedicated to scriptures, but they're not dedicated to obeying scriptures. Mm -hmm. But you have to be dedicated to obeying the Lord. When we obey the Lord, it's simply telling us that we are walking after the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit goes before us because the word of God is already written and he has given us a guideline to follow. Okay, so I, I, this is what I look for. I look for deacons. Uh, and I mean, so the, the deacons, but we are talking about deacons, but I'm going to jump on preachers. Who wants to sit in the pool pit next to the preacher? But when the offering come around, you draw up like a snail with fire in them. No, you're supposed to be a giver. Amen. Whether they like it or not. I mean, after all, scripture said, for God so loved the world that he gave. And we have to be a giver, a giver. Okay, you don't test God by giving. You give because you love him. You're showing, he had my back, he asks us for this. And so if you love him, you give. And you don't, you don't give according to your feelings. You give because it's your responsibility. And you are showing God that you love him. Um, when it comes down to the, the church, I look for someone who, who can relate to people um, I had to tell, I told a young man once that you have to become all things to all people. Everybody is not at the level that you are in Christ Jesus. And so you cannot, uh, you don't let them pull you down to their level, but you do got to meet them at their level. And when you meet them at their level, then you can, you can uh, have a conversation with them and you can show them and you can, the word of God will teach them. Because we can't convert nobody. The word converts us. Um, and when we follow, you know, I'm looking for someone 
uh, I'm gonna put it like this, like old preachers say, what, you gonna go when you don't feel like going? You gonna do when you don't feel like doing? And uh, as Pastor Kathy mentioned earlier, about part of your responsibility in giving. You know I mean, that's, that means you, we give and we give of ourselves. And I've heard some people say, well, you know, I come to the church and I do this and I do that and that's my tithes. No, you blessed just to do that. That's your responsibility. You know, but when it comes to giving of ourselves, and then we have to be in the right spirit and uh, or have the right spirit dwelling in us. Humility. We ought to give joyfully, we ought to do joyfully, and we ought to do so without being judgmental. That's what I look for. Pastor Marshall, also, I look for a deacon. I look for a deacon who's going to have my back. There you go. Mm -hmm. because, I, I, because I'm telling you, people will pit you as a deacon. They will put you in a position where you have to choose between them and the pastor. Mm -hmm. And I look for a deacon who's going to have, have my back, so to speak. Can I get a witness? Amen. And I, I look for a deacon who's not easily swayed or persuaded. If I say, uh, deacons, we, we have a meeting and this is what we're going to do, I don't need a deacon who's going to have the layman or the laity in the church, even his wife, come back and say, well, I don't think this should be done. I don't, I don't agree with that. And the deacon all of a sudden does not agree with the pastor. Mm -hmm. And I've, see, I've even seen that being done in the church. And it causes a schism in the body when a deacon doesn't have the backbone and the fortitude to stand up for the pastor. So I need the deacon to have, have my back. Also, I need, a, if he's a married, and I prefer him to be married, um, for more reasons than one. <laughs> but I won't go into that. It's a whole new subject. <laughs> I prefer him to be married to a woman. Amen. Amen. One wife. Amen. And I, and, and I need to see how he treat his wife. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. I, the, the deacon I prefer, I select, he's going to have to be good to his wife. To the point where his wife respects the fact that I have chosen him as a deacon. And she's not standing in the back saying, I'm one of the ones who rebut. <laughs> I, no, don't pick him as no deacon. I agree with him. You understand what I'm saying? So I, all those, there's so many requirements that a deacon uh, should have uh, according to the word of God. And also, he also must exemplify the attributes of God. That's right. Which are in Galatians 5 and 22. All of those attributes, he's got to exemplify them, especially temperance. Amen. 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 And meekness. Amen. Amen. So I just wanted to point that out, Pastor Amen. Marshall. Amen. Back to you. Uh, question number uh, six. Does the laity of the church follow the lead of the deacons? That's the simple question. Does the laity of the church follow the lead of the uh, deacon? Rightfully so, they should. They should follow the lead of the deacon. Uh, the pastor should never appoint a deacon if he's not capable of leading the people. Because there are times when the pastor can't be there. And the deacon will have to step in and lead. Amen. 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 Pastors, pastors over in Timbuktu somewhere <laughs> and, and plain delay. Church has to go on as planned. That's right. Amen. That's right. And the laity uh, should follow the leadership of the deacon. Amen. Pastor John. Um, I agree that uh, the church should follow the laity of, of the deacons because um, if the deacons are filled with the spirit, they'll follow the laity of Christ. Mm -hmm. So it all falls in line. I mean, you know, you're being obedient to what this says the Lord. But I just want to say this, uh, there's something Pastor Kevin said about deacon being swayed. We, we must understand too that sometimes uh, men, it's not so much they being swayed by others, but they be swayed by their own opinions. 
and your <laughs> and your own opinion is not of God. You know, we have what thus says the Lord. So then when you get up there talking about what you think, see, it's what God says, it's not what you think. It's what the Lord see the Lord is the only some only one that I know that does not make errors. Amen. Amen. I can make errors in my thinking. But if I follow what thus says the Lord, there's no way I can make an error. If I do exactly what he say and when he say do it, you cannot make an error. Yeah, but sure, the, the, the deacons must follow. The, the church should be following the laity of the deacons. Uh, let, let me, I want to say this. They only should follow, the, the laity should only follow the lead of the deacons if the deacons is following the lead of the pastor. Amen. 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 Because Amen. some deacons got their own agenda. You know it. And their agenda is to get rid of the pastor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, 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 and sometimes, listen here, yeah, that, that shouldn't, the laity, the laity is the church at large, mm -hmm. not just the laymen. Laymen is just the men. The laity is everybody. Mm -hmm. I know you said that that's just, they, they, they so sexist with that stuff, right? I know. That's what right. <laughs> Just like when they say the word brothers, that means men. When they say brethren, that means everybody. That's right. See, ain't that something? Mm -hmm. So ladies, y'all fall under some out of category. But we'll discuss that. <laughs> Don't follow. The camera, y'all watch me. Don't follow the lead of the deacons unless the deacon is following the lead of the pastor under the direction of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Amen. 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 Next question. What is the criteria of the deacon? What is the criteria of the deacon, Pastor John? Amen. Uh, the deacon's criteria uh, of the deacon should be to meet uh, the needs that the church uh, whatever needs he see that the church uh, uh, needs at that particular time or whatever it is um, what to where the church uh, might be I mean you know because it's talk about the business of the church too I said one of the criteria is the, uh, of the deacons is again to follow the pastor what to help meet the criteria of the needs of the people maybe you know see a family that's in the church and they might um, need some help so the deacon's job ought to be to see to it or go to the pastor and report to him that uh, family, I won't call no family's name because I know nobody get upset, they might need uh, some help in some area. You know, so their criteria should be to follow uh, the leadership of the one who God has uh, put in place. Uh, that, that should be their, their main criteria and not to be distracted it's kind of like a, a, I, I don't want I don't, I don't like to talk about negative things, but if everybody would stay in their own lane, you wouldn't be bumping heads. Uh, and if everybody was humble and on the Christ and doing what Christ has instructed us to do, then the deacons would be the deacons, and the pastor would be the pastors, the layman would be the layman, I mean, and the church would be the church of God that God has called upon in these last days. Um, Pastor Marshall, in, in, in 1 Timothy, uh, around the third chapter, he, he actually gives you uh, 13 uh, qualifications uh, for deacons. Uh, but it, uh, it refers you back to Acts, the sixth chapter. Uh, it takes you back to Acts, the sixth chapter, and... Uh, the third verse again, and I find that pretty uh, interesting that uh, um, this chapter uh, three in First Timothy, starting at the eighth verse, I believe, he talks about uh, um, the criteria. Now you have to understand criteria and duties. Mm -hmm. Duties is that which you've been appointed to do and that you're going to carry out come rain or shine. Mm -hmm. Criteria is that what is what people see and watch on a daily basis, even when you're not at the church. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So let's, let's make that uh, clear. Duties is that which you've been appointed to do uh, 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 at the church and for the church. 
But criteria is that which people see when you're not at church. So second, first Timothy, the third chapter, he starts talking about some things. And I'll just touch on a few because I know time is far spent. And he said uh, uh, the deacon uh, must be uh, not double-tongued. Mm -hmm. And one of the, another criteria is uh, he can't be given to too much wine. Mm -hmm. And he cannot be greedy of filthy lucre. Money. Amen. That, that filthy lucre is money, money that dirty money. <laughs> money you got, you gain, you gotten. Can I get a witness? Um, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. In other words, don't have the word in your head, but not in your heart. Uh, and then he goes on, and there are 13 criteria, but I like the other one when he's, he even uh, 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 brings to uh, mind their wives. Even so, must their wives be good and not slanderers. Their wives must be sober. These are criteria. Watch this. Their wives must also be faithful in all things. Mm -hmm. So if the deacon, the criteria of a deacon is that he should be faithful, then his wife got to be faithful too. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. I don't want a deacon everywhere and I never see his wife. And you got a church full of God, God you know, uh, young women. And let me, can, I, can we talk? And you got a church full of young women. And, 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 and they're impressionable and they're not married and the deacon is married but I never see his wife because there's no faithfulness in their union or in her relationship to the church I have a problem with that anybody else you know what I'm talking about amen so you got and that that'll open up uh, doors as well uh, that shouldn't be open and then it says let the deacons be the husbands of one wife and they must rule over their own children and their own houses as well. These are some of the, the, the criteria that a deacon should. You can't rule God's house and you can't rule your own house. All right. You can't tell somebody else's child to sit down and your child running around doing backwards flips in the church while you try to practice trying to preach. Can I get a witness? That's, that should be for some pastors. <laughs> Can I get a witness? Amen. I understand. You know, deacons can go to, go home and go to bed. You and your wife, y'all going to have some pillow talking. Y'all, there's going to be some pillow talking. But in that pillow talking, she shouldn't be swaying your mind and controlling your thoughts and telling you what the pastor should and shouldn't be do. She should be faithful to the calling in which the deacon has been called to as well. Amen? Amen? Because she's in that thing together. So those are some of the criteria. So when you get home, look at that third, third chapter. Starting at the uh, eighth verse of First Timothy, Pastor Kathy, I'm on. So the, that filthy lucre part—that's that's dirty money. He can't slang dope on the street. No, 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 in the church. no, 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 sir. Okay, I, I want to get it clear now. He can't, he can't, he can't, he can't be uh, eighteen hundred in the Patron and, and, and walk in the church on Sunday <laughs> singing. Low. I'm asking. I'm just asking. He, 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 he can't be. I, I remember years ago, and I won't use any churches or any name, uh, but there was a deacon who, who was uh, a owner of a shop, but yet he, he did some things he should not have done uh, as far as in, uh, money and drugs are concerned. But when he became a deacon, he had, it was explained to him that if you're, you're still holding on to anything of the past, then you have to let that go. It's not to say God can't use deacons right. that used to sling <laughs> you know, because he'll take a prostitute and make her, you know, right. make, right. make, right. make her, uh, you know, pull her out of the church. He can, God can, God can do that. Right. Now, not us. Right. Amen. 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 <laughs> Oh, Amen. I, I mean, there was a prostitute who washed Jesus' feet, didn't she? Was that Mary Magdalene? Was that Mary Magdalene? There was a prostitute in the Saudi line in Rahab, but I mean, he washed Jesus' feet, and the disciple got mad and said, "What's she washing your feet for? She she used to do Jesus to leave her alone." So who are we to judge? Amen. Amen. In that sense, I'm talking about. I'm just asking. So you can't have a girlfriend and a wife, a 
Girl, and the girl girlfriend across town. One on the west side and one on the north side. No, he, he, no, he can't do it. First of all, somebody gonna see him anyway. Across the street. No, <laughs> and one in the church. Can't do all no, I just can't get it clear for me. <laughs> all of Keep these, land with get these questions are all right, Pastor. All yeah. of what you just said follows, it, 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 it's covered under the umbrella of being blameless. Amen. 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 Being blameless. Amen. Amen. And filthy lucre is, 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 is it, it, you can't, you can't count God's money and you ain't a giver. Amen. I mean, let's let's go there for a minute, deacons. We watch it. <laughs> you cannot count God's money and you're not a giver. I have a problem with people counting God's money, counting the people's money, and you're not a giver. Amen. That's why I don't. You have to be careful that you don't appoint deacons who. Uh, 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 put them in that position and they're financially struggling. Can I get a witness? Because they're tempted. They are easily tempted by that. So you have to really be careful. That's why you have to be, again, you have to be led by God and filthy lucre. And I'm telling you, when somebody's struggling with money and it's free money sitting on the table and nobody's sitting in there, everybody out there shouting and carrying on, getting sweaty and everything, so the devil gonna tell him to collect a few of those dollars because you need them. You working for the church anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, talk back to me. <laughs> you working for the church anyway, so you might as well get you a few. Ain't nobody here but God, and God ain't gonna tell nobody. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I just want to say something on, on a couple of these criteria. One of them is that's qualified to teach. Okay, qualified to teach, but if you can't, if you, how can you teach unless you be taught? Some people are not teachable. So that's one of the that's one of the criteria. You must be a willing uh, participant to learn. Okay, and even when we get into that about ruling his household well, uh, so that men won't get big headed, ruling his household well has to do with uh, you going to take what God has blessed you with and you go out and get drunk with it. You go out and mess up the finances and you don't pay the bills at home. Mm, wow. So ruling your household well means simply that you are taking care of business at home. Amen. That's right. And if you don't pay your bills at home, That's right. why would we give you the responsibility <laughs> of giving you the money to pay the bills at the church. Amen. It has falls under that responsibility. So then, you know, uh, well, you always scrape it to my pastor, can I borrow this, pastor, can I borrow that? But yet every time pastor turn around, he see you with a $10 pack of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, $12. $12. $12. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, I mean that's what it's talking about. And, uh, um, then too, they can't be, what, levels of money? Uh, uh, he talks about uh, you ought to have a, a good testimony, That's not right. being puffed up in spirit. Right. That's right. And, and then, too, a lot of times, uh, people, when they get in authority, they don't even have time for God anymore. Huh? Right. Wow. They don't have time for prayer anymore. Mm -hmm. wow. You call it, we got time, those of those of that who are not slowful uh, will get up and go to work. And they don't mind. We work <laughs> overtime. As a matter of fact, we work overtime on God's time. <laughs> Hello. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should be in church worshiping God, but I got to work this whole time and make this money. No, you don't. No, you no, you don't. No, God has blessed you to work six days a week. Then you on that seventh day or uh, whatever your day is, you ought to give one day to the Lord. Amen. Now I'm gonna piss everybody off. The scripture said give one day. Mm -hmm. I didn't say thirty minutes. I didn't say 20 minutes. The scripture said we ought to give the least Lord what one day. And we find that even in our churches, a lot of our members, choir come in, sing their songs, and they hold a the finger up, go straight and out the door. No, you're not reverencing God. We're supposed to give God a day of worship. He requires it. Oh, I hope New Direction watching, but don't leave me because I said it. I'm going to say it because it's in scripture. He said, give him a day of rest and worship him Amen. in prayer. But we are in such a hurry. We can't even stick around for the benediction. Let's know the message. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Reverend, uh, I appreciate.
appreciate you breaking down the uh, criteria of uh, deacon. Uh, I'm sure when we uh, talk later, we'll, we'll, we'll chuckle and laugh and then we'll pray <laughs> some of this. But um, when we talk about a deacon being ready to teach or to bring a meditational message, in the absence of the pastor, or if the pastor isn't capable, what do you think about that, preachers, uh, as a whole? Uh, should a deacon be ready to teach, after teach, or ready to bring a meditational message in the absence of a pastor? And while you're giving that, give us the give us uh, in detail your breakdown of the role of a deacon as a whole in this contemporary age that we're living in, good or bad. What you think? So uh, we'll start with uh, Pastor uh, uh, Jones, if you're ready. Amen. Yeah, um, in the role of a deacon, he should be qualified to teach and bring a message in the absence of the pastor. That means he should be qualified. See, if you qualify for something, it means you are ready at all times. Mm -hmm. Qualified. You are ready at all times. You don't come and say, well, you know, I'm not ready. You ought to have the word of God in you at all times. Because you never know what's going to take place. So um, we ought to be, the deacons should be ready. In the, and then let me say this again. In the absence Amen. of the pastor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we got people who sit in the church. They want to give a message while the pastor is giving the message. Mm -hmm. Well, you ain't the pastor. Okay, so uh, it's a, it break down the, the roles of the deacon. Well, first of all, uh, some of the bad things is that we have a lot of people who want to teach, but they're not teachable. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are all disciples of Christ, in, in, including the pastors. And whether you whether you believe it or not, we are still learning. Mm -hmm. We are still absorbing the Word of God. We we still study, meditate. Uh, the book said, "What meditate on the Word day and night." You know, so we still uh, are studying the Word of God. Um, some de some deacons have bad habit that uh, they know more than. Watch out, preacher! Watch out. The pastor. <laughs> well, maybe you do know more, <laughs> but you still ain't the pastor. Amen. Amen. Help me, Lord. Amen. Um, my wife told me once when she went on a retreat, she was talking to a young lady on, on the bus because sometimes pastors got the idea that I have to lead the church with the pastor. Well, uh, church with two heads is like a monster. Mm -hmm. You only got one. Okay. One head. Now, until God removes that particular pastor, whether he has the pastor to step aside and have someone else to fulfill, it's not the deacon's job to tell that pastor when to step aside. It is the Holy Spirit of God Amen. who will lead that pastor to step aside when God tells him to. Amen. We thank you for tuning in to Pastors United. Uh, we had an interesting subject matter today. We were dealing Amen. with deacons, Amen. and we were getting the pastor's perspectives on deacons. Tune in when we will have the deacons, and we will get their perspective on what their duty is to the church and their duty is to the ministry. Amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless you and may he keep you. Amen. 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 Amen.